if you ever search for one of these trucks and you're looking through pictures and you get to the interior you always deal with this uh, always has a ripped seat bottom along the seam after years of people getting in and out and sliding on the seats and then you often see some cigarette holes so I'm gonna deal with that by actually replacing the entire seats um, I have a center console that I got I actually front and back seats with a center console that I got out of a different truck and I wanted the center console just as a nice upgrade and the seats also have the, um, the armrests that come down which is proper for the center console so I tried let me show you quick the seats I have I'm just doing the front today so these are the seats you need the bottom panels here that for the glove box and then under the driver for the uh, steering wheel and then for the the bolts that it mounts to the they're like an E10 or, or I don't know if it's actually E10 but it's an E series um, bolt which is a kind of like a female Torx so just know that you're probably gonna have to buy something unique like that because most people don't have those so the uh, it's only a few bolts like I said and I'm gonna talk a little bit right now before I get into it I tried to replace just this uh, seat cover and it seems like for leather it's easier but for these cloth ones it's hard um, the seat cover on the that set of seats I just showed you outside the bottom like usual it was all ripped up and um, so I looked on all these different websites and there's all these different levels of quality and I landed on Richmond Auto Upholstery so they are out of like Texas and I saw their pictures and it looked just like factory the quality they said was like the best they get their materials from this manufacturer all this stuff so I opted in to buy that for $220 it came in and it was just a totally like different quality it was or not quality I guess but tone like uh, it was much darker than this so this would have been like really dark and then this was light and then it, it just didn't match and I wanted to be as close as factory as possible but I understand that it's not going to be the exact same match obviously a new seat cover versus a 15 year old seat is not going to be the same but I was expecting definitely better so it seems like the leather seats are easier to replace or like the skins are easier to replace and you can get them to match better but for the, these cloth ones, what I'm just going to recommend is if you're trying to update your cloth seats, you just need to find OEM, OEM seats. So let me get into the replacement right now. I'm trying to think if I have anything else to share. One other thing is um, I, actually, I also got back seats out of the 1500 truck that I got the front seats out of. So one note is the 1500s and 2500s they have different um different brackets in the back so i learned that after you really need to get a 2500 back seat or i might look into taking off the cloth off the 1500 seats and put them on mine so i'm not sure yet but i'm going to show that in a different video um i'm also thinking about replacing the uh, steering wheel to like steering wheel controls but that seems like a more involved process you need like different a different clock spring and all this different stuff to get the um, to get the buttons to work so that'll just be a different day or I might not do it I'm not sure yet so let me get into this I'm gonna try out my GoPro um, chest bracket thing and I'm gonna try to do a time lapse I believe so just uh, stick with me here as I replace the seats. I just realized my e-torque sockets, um, the ones I have were not big enough. So I think I do actually have the right size because I've taken these seats out with those before, but I must have grabbed, I have a garage somewhere else, so I must have grabbed um, just the wrong set of sizes, unfortunately, but fortunately, I, um, so I'm not near the garage right now. So 
a 15 millimeter, just a normal six pointer. Um, that actually worked at least on this first bolt here. So I'm just gonna use that. So I have the center console in and the side panels. So just to make a note quick, I do a lot of finagling and making sure things worked before I got it on camera. The um, Get the panels in first and then put the center console in after and because, because the center console will butt up to these panels on both sides. And just make sure you have all the clips and stuff for these panels. Um, I lost, I think, one or two. So. Wasn't a huge deal though because the there's some fasteners that will hold it down nice and tight. For this uh, center console, it came out of the SLT Bose truck and it has this electric block, which I'm not connecting to anything. I'm just kind of leaving it there. I don't really care for HVAC or this um, stuff to work back here. You can see there's like volume, so must have had screens in the truck uh, from the parts truck. But again, I don't care. And then for these ports here, the this is the Bose truck um, uh, setup harness. I just kind of stuffed the wire harness down there. I used the wire harness from my truck, which I had to kind of like put through a hole and kind of finagle this uh, piece in. I didn't really finagle it in, but I just had to like make sure that the wires didn't uh, get in the way of this being clipped in and installed. So you just have to, Kind of play around with it a little bit but other than that seems pretty good um it's nice and solid in there and the only mounting points are for are at these uh 
you know, the seat bolts. So I'm gonna do that now and it'll be almost done. And just by the way, take out like I did the bezel that goes here. Um, makes it just easier to screw around with this area, so. day and I have the seats totally installed so let me just show you quick before signing off this is how it looks which is absolutely awesome it looks so good so the front two fasteners are nuts the back two are bolts the back two are the e-series and it's the e14 the front two are larger and I did not have the right size um, it, I actually used a 15 millimeter uh, six point socket and that worked. So um, there's that. The other last note is the electrical connection under the driver's seat. It fit the, the both trucks, the my old seat and the seats out of this new truck or the parts truck. They both fit the same um, female connector on my uh, interior harness but the pins were mostly the same but there's like one or two that were in different locations I'm not sure why it's kind of odd because it's like the same seat with the same power options but maybe just because it was a maybe it was a different year maybe it was because of the SLT or it wasn't the SLT but um it was a higher end Bose truck so maybe that had to do something with it and um, but it still worked so I, I kind of had a it wasn't the same exact connector but it still fit and I kind of had to like really squeeze it in to get it to fit in there but my power works for the seats so I I guess it's good <laughs> um, never really expected that to come up but it did but no issue overall um, the other thing to note is just kind of shake your seats back and forth when you, after you install it, because my some of the threads in the in the fasteners were corroded, just from rust over time. And I thought it was tight enough, but it was not. So I noticed it when I was driving around. The uh, I just had to tighten it even more. So if you just hear a rattle there, but let me know if you have any questions on the install. I hope this helped and. Yeah, thanks for watching.